From adorable to menacing, we'll be going over the highest static power in all of Pow World, that being the legendary subspecies Frostalian Knock. An absolute clean sleek looking dark horse that could easily be the logo of an exotic Ferrari. And just like a Ferrari has the power to absolutely annihilate your enemies. This is my video series where we go over the challenge of making any pal the strongest competitive pal possible. Today we'll be going over the best possible pal ability, IVs, movesets, passives, and crossbreeding combinations to make the best competitive Frostalian knock possible. While playing on normal difficulty as this is the default difficulty and what a majority of players will be most familiar with. And before any angry comments come my way, this is not an alpha boss pal version. I quickly want to go over the difference between boss pals and non boss pals. For those that don't know, boss pals have way higher stats than non boss pals by like up to triple from what I've seen. However, you can't hatch boss pals. You can only cash them out in the world and hope they have the perfect traits. You can, however, use boss pals to breed, they just won't produce any boss pals. Which doesn't really matter too much in this example as Frostalian Knock can only be acquired from breeding. With that being said, let's go over the journey of making the strongest competitive Frostalian Knock possible. But if you do enjoy the video or learn anything helpful, consider hitting the like and subscribe button. It really helps out and comment what power we should go over next. So let's go over the main goal of this challenge run. The best passives and skills to teach our Frostalian Knock and how I achieve them. For our attacks, we will mainly be using dark type attacks to benefit from our stat bonus damage. Dark types are super effective against neutral types and deal reduced damage to dragon types. That being said, the skills we'll be going for are Poison Blast, Spirit Flame, and the last skill is your Flex Spot. Either Nightmare Ball, Dark Laser, or an Ice Damage skill. Now the first two skills don't sound very strong, especially Poison Blast. I mean, a 30 power attack, you surely can't be cooking. But let's see if he's cooking. But it wasn't until my homie Melodic opened my eyes to its true power. It has an extremely high chance of applying a poison damage over time effect on them. That does damage based on their max health similar to burning which we can also apply burning with spirit flame. And for some bizarre reason the poison and burning damage effects stack and just melt boss health bars away. You can also spam poison blast ridiculously fast. Plus it does dark damage which we benefit from stab bonus damage. Just an overall powerful skill on any pal. As for Spirit Flame, a good skill that does good stab damage with a low cooldown but mainly used to proc burning on our opponents to whittle them down especially those high HP bosses like Legendary Pals and the final boss Victor. Now our last skill is up to you. Nightmare Ball is a good quick hard hitting ability or you could run Dark Laser to unleash the true power of dark damage. Or if you're feeling a bit spicy, or should I say chilly, you could run Crystal Wing or Blizzard Spike to freeze the opponents, which also gives us good coverage against Dragon types. As Frostalian Knock is a single dark typing that takes extra damage from Dragon attacks, which can be a problem when taking on a Jet Dragon. However, Frostalian Knock is no pushover and can stand toe to toe with them easily. Now let's see how about acquiring these previously mentioned skills. Spirit Fling, Crystal Wing, Nightmare Ball, and Blizzard Spike can naturally be acquired from leveling up. The other skills will have to be learned from using skill fruits that are acquired from skill trees or can be purchased from certain merchants and can be a pain to get sometimes. But enough of that mouthful, let's move on to the juicy passives. Pals can have up to 4 passives that are randomly assigned when captured and cannot be changed. I've set out these 4 passives to be the best for our Frostalian knock. Lord of the Underworld, Ferocious, Musclehead, and Legend. Legend increases our attack and defense by 20% and movement speed by 15%. Musclehead increases attack by 30% while also reducing work speed by 50%. Ferocious furthermore increases our attack by 20%. And lastly, Lord of the Underworld increases our damage done with dark attacks by 20%. These passives together will absolutely shred most enemies into oblivion that becomes nearly overpowered when buffing our power ability. More on that later. But now in typical top competitive team building, we run into our first hurdle. Neither of the Frost Islands can naturally have Lord of the Underworld, so we'll have to see if we can do some specialty crossbreeding to fix that. Time to dive into power breeding once again. All pals can breed with each other, simply build a breeding farm and assign two opposite gender pals with some cake. Give it some time for love to blossom and they'll lay an egg which is hatched in an egg incubator. 
those hashtags then have a chance of inheriting their parents' passives with a chance of developing any other random number of passives. That's the easy version, but it can quickly get out of hand when crossbreeding. Luckily for me, this time we don't have to do crazy amounts of crossbreeding like I did in my previous Pengala challenge. Check it out if you haven't. So my hopes and dreams weren't completely killed this challenge run. Musclehead and Ferocious are traits any pal naturally has access to, unlike Legend and Lord of the Underworld. Legend is exclusive to the four legendaries of the game, and of those four, Necromus has the exclusive access to Lord of the Underworld passive, which luckily can be bred down. Now comes the main problem I ran into. Can we even pass down Lord of the Underworld when Necromus can't ever produce either of the two Frost Aliens? And at first I thought it was impossible until I realized Necromus can however hatch a Hell Sephir. How is that useful you may ask? Well when Frost Alien crossbreeds with the Hell Sephir, produces a Frost Alien Knock. So that's our ticket in. This should hopefully make sense with my breeding formula. Necromus crossbreeding with either of the two Yormantides hatches Hell Sephir with the potential of having Lord of the Underworld and Legend. And luckily one of my Yorms had Musclehead so I could pass that down to in one generation line. So that was three of the four passes I needed. Now Ferocious was going to be passed down by my Frost Alien as I already had one with Ferocious. And bam, that was mainly it for PAL generations needed to be passed down. However, we still come across the agony of crossbreeding, trying to get the perfect trace passing down to my Hell Sephir, and then my Hell Sephir and my Frost Stallion passing down to my Frost Stallion Knock, until I get my perfect passes passing down together, as you aren't even guaranteed any of the passes passing down, let alone together. And at the constant pain of waiting hours for eggs to hatch, it can be rough for the first time pal breeders. Meaning if your luck is anything like mine, you'll have to hatch a crazy amount of eggs. Or if you're lucky like my cousin, you'll probably get it on your first or second hatch. But with enough patience and love from the divines, I was able to hatch three perfect trait Frostalia knocks with Musclehead, Ferocious, Legend, and Lord of the Underworld. This took me about 7 hours of non-stop egg and cake grinding. Not as bad as the Pengala thankfully which took over 14 hours as we only had to do 3 generation lines compared to that nearly 10 from last video. But enough celebrating, let's get our Frost Alien to max level and max power ability level to see its full potential. So we're getting closer to the end of our Prodigy Frost Alien Nox story. Time to level her up in true power wolf fashion by feeding her her own failed Frost Alien Nox siblings, the ones that didn't make the cut, condense and squash down for her own cruel power, which could be quite easy with the amount of eggs you probably had to hatch. Condensing will boost the PAL stats and increase our PAL ability. Frostalian Knox's ability is being able to ride the mythical dark horse that has the ability to fly, being able to control the movements and skills of the dark horse. Not as fast as the Lamborghini that is Jet Dragon, but a strong second, while also allowing you to use weapons unlike Jet Dragon. And for anyone struggling to fly the mount, you simply just have to build a PAL saddle at a PAL workbench and then just have to rapidly press the jump button twice to take off. As one press of the button will just make you jump, pressing it twice will make you fly up in the air. Also any damage done by you or the PAL while mounted can be increased by up to 100% and that's where this ability gets truly broken. The PAL ability not only makes the player's attacks do dark bonus damage, but also double Frost Stallion Nox damage with dark attacks while mounted. Furthermore, pushing the absolute limit of this pal's damage with the powerful skills and passes we chose. As for getting to level 50, I still haven't found the best way to level up. I just run around the northwest icy area, clearing the big pals and most importantly bosses with the jet dragon, just spamming fire attacks. If anyone has a better strategy for leveling pals to level 50, comment down below please, save me some time please. Now let's move on to IVs. IVs are hidden stat boosts that increase health, attack or defense by up to 30% that are permanent and set once a pal is captured or hatched. My Frost Alien's IVs are about 18% health, 26% attack, and 25% defense. These are actually really good IVs thankfully, almost maxed out on two of them. Now I could keep grinding egg hatches for perfect IVs, but with the randomness of pal passives and IVs, it can take a long time and I think you're able to pass down IVs with higher IV pals. I've never tested this, I've been told this, so if anyone knows, let me know. So I'll save the IV grinding for when more PvP info is announced, as we have the PAL traits we can repeatedly breed for them, and we can use this time for other PALs. 
But now everybody wants to see our pal fully specked out. So fully specked out with a mozzarella cheeseburger that increases attack by an additional 20%. My Frost Alien knock stats are over 7.6k health, 1282 defense, and a monstrous 2417 attack for a non boss pal. As for how it did in combat, it was absolutely melting pals away, even the legendary pals as well as the final boss, Victor. So if you are looking for a powerful pal as strong as they come, then look no further than Frostallion Knock, the highest overall stats of any pal in the game. An absolute menace when mounted and a pal worth getting. This challenge run was truly fun and thankfully not as bad as some of the other pals are gonna be. Can't wait to dive into that mess. But for now, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date when the next videos drop. Like and comment what pal we should go over next, as next we will be going over a requested pal. Until then, I was your host Aiden, and I'll see you in the next video. Toodaloo!